Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mathnasium. I've had a couple month hiatus and let's just say I'm excited. I'm ready to jump back on the horse and start recording some uh, some algebra videos. And you know, as it is tradition, it's 8.52 p.m. which means it's time to make an Algebra 2 video. Let's go ahead and jump right in with 5-5 five, five, Radical Equations Day 2 Camera crew, can you hit the fade? Hit the fade, camera crew. Oh, they already did. Let's jump in. Let's jump right in here. We're going to do some math. I got this new software. We're looking profesh. Man, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling just crisp. Hope you guys are too. I'm not at school today. I mean, I was. But I'm not. I mean, the day that this is being shown, I'm not technicalities, whatever. Let's take a look at this first example. Solving radical equations, we're going to jump right back in with where we were. Now, you may be tempted to say, hey, look, this is a square, this x to the second, and this 16 is a perfect square. Can I just, can I just t square them right now? And the answer is, no, you cannot. And I'm about to show you why in just a second. Let's take a look. I'm going to pick just two simple random numbers. We're going to see if this holds true. For this example here, let's let. Let's go ahead and let a equal 9. And we're going to let, it's a little too, maybe a little too big. a is going to be equal to 9. b is equal to 4. That's not big enough. Software, I'm working it out, working out the kinks here. a equal to 9, b equal to Four. If we plug it in in this particular scenario, um, is the square root of 9 times 4 equal to, let's ask this question, the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. And when we take a look at this, we're going to see that, yeah, the square root of 36 is equal to 3 times 2, because the square root of 36 is 6. Sweet. So this one holds out. So what does this mean? Can we take a product and break it apart, a, a, a product under a square root and break it apart into a product of two separate square roots? And we can. The question is, does that work for addition? And I'm going to go ahead and switch to ominous red to let you know. Now, for this case, I'm going to change A and B for simplicity's sake. I'm going to let A equal 3, and we're going to let b equal 2. So I, I, I'm changing up the letters, but we should be, still be able to see whether or not it works. All right, let's jump right in. So the question here is, is a to the second, aka, let me undo that for a sec, is 3 squared, which is 9, is 9 plus 2 squared, which is 4, is that equal to 3 plus 2? Pardon my dog. Apparently, he is um, he's having, a, having some trouble there. And when we do this, you'll end up that we see this is the square root of 13. Is the square root of 13 equal to 5? No, it is not. Um, so if you check, this actually does not work. So what does that mean? We can't square, take the square root, and we can't pull it apart when there's addition or subtraction under here. We actually are kind of stuck um, with this, and we're going to have to find other means by which to separate this. We can do it when it's multiplication or division, not when it's addition and subtraction. So now that we have that established, Let's go ahead and jump right in to solving this radical equation. Remember the steps from yesterday. Step one, solve for the root. Step two, undo the root using its inverse operation. Step three, solve the equation. Step four, check to see if it's an extraneous solution or whatever solutions you got are extraneous. We're going to switch to blue and go for it. Step one, solve. Well, we've already solved for the radical. Step two, eliminate the radical. Remember this has index two, so two... Um, deal with the the square root. We are going to square both sides, which will result in something that looks like this. We're going to square 
the square root of x plus 16, and we are going to square the right side as well. I feel like this mic is too good. It's like picking up my breathing. But I guess you guys are used to that because I have that weird headset on. <sighs> okay, x squared plus 16 equals 25. Go ahead and subtract 16 from each side to solve for x. Minus 16. Minus 16. And we end up with x squared equals um, a number. It equals 9. Um, now, what number? What number times itself is equal to 9? Since this is a squared equation, we are going to square root both sides here. And we end up with what do we end up with? We end up with two solutions. Those solutions are what number times itself is 9? x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. Sweet. Okay, two solutions. However, do not trust them. One of them could be an imposter or they could be genuine. You know how many Cubans snuck into our own CIA during the, the time of Fidel Castro? But I digress. Let's go ahead and check. Let's see if any of these are imposters. I'm going to use red. All right, check in x equals 3. We can just do this really quick. You always want to check, remember, with that original equation at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and check. I'm going to plug in uh, x equals 3 will give us, I'm going to kind of do this quickly. The question is, is 3 squared is 3 squared plus 16, is that equal to 5? Um, and that's 9 plus 16, so is the square root of 25 equal to 5? The answer is yes, ching x equals 3 checks out. So let's check x equals negative 3. Let's check that one, and we end up with uh, negative 3 times itself is still positive 9. Is positive 9 plus 16 equal to 5? And we can see pretty quickly that it is. I'm going to try and fix this little weird circle that's happening on the screen, so I'm going to pause just a sec. I think we're good. Should be working now. So hopefully that makes sense. So uh, this radical equation has two solutions, um, 3 and negative 3. Both of them check out. Let's go ahead and run right along to the next one. Um, why don't you guys get warmed up with this one? Give the video a pause, see if you can figure it out. Um, for this one, I really don't want the... I'm not looking for the uh, imaginary solutions. This will have some, some imaginary solutions. Just give me that real solution um, and check to see if it's, it's extraneous. Feel free to pause the video, or um, you can just truck... Let, you know, just go for it right right ahead, whatever. Well, I'm about to start anyway, so. Time to decide, I guess. Here we go. Solve for the radical. It's done. Get rid of the radical. This is a cube root. How do we undo a cube root? Well, the inverse operation of a cube root is raising to the third power. So I'll raise the left side to the third power and the right side to the third power. This is going to be x to the third plus 9 equals 1 to the third, which is 1. So what I just did is I took this side, raised it to the third, this to the third, 1 to the third is still 1. Okay, now we want to solve for x. So we're going to subtract 9 from each side, which will be x to the third equals negative 8. Okay, that circle's still there. Let me try and get rid of it one more time. I think we might be stuck with it. That's all right. We're learning. Mr. Slago's learning here. All right, so... um. The x to the third equals negative 8. What number um, multiplied 3 times is negative 8? There is only one number, and that is negative 2. Now, we got to make sure that this one's legit, but I think it's not going to take too long. Let's go ahead and check. Let's check our solution. x equals negative 2. Plug that in. The question here is, is the cube root of negative 2 cubed plus 9 equal to 1. Is that true? All right. Well, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So is the cube root of negative 8 plus 9, which is 1, is that equal to 1? The answer is yes. So 
So this one checks out. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Let's roll. All right, uh, this one is gonna be pretty straightforward, uh, I think. We've done ones that are similar, um, except this one, well, you're gonna see what's gonna happen here in just a second. So let's take a look. All right, so we wanna solve for, um, uh, we want to solve for the root, which currently isn't solved, so we're going to move that to the other side. So we end up here with um, the square root of 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. All right, and then let's go ahead and take a peek here. Now that it's solved, we want to undo the square root, so we are going to square both sides. The square, squaring a square root will make that go away. And then on the right side, we have x minus 2 to the second power. So I squared both sides, gone. And then we have this here, which we're going to have to evaluate. That is, excuse me, that is x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is, so we have 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4, simplifying. 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now to solve this quadratic, we're going to have to use, um, we're going to have to get a little creative here. Uh, we're going to have to get everything on one side into standard form. What's going to involve subtracting 2x from both sides. Um, and adding 1 to both sides. All right, so we're going to get, uh, I'm going to bring this up here over to the right, which will give us, let's see here, it's going to give us 0 equals um, x squared minus 6x um, plus 5. So we're looking for factors of 5 that add to negative 6. So two numbers that multiply to positive 5 and add to negative 6. And those are x minus 1 and x minus 5. Multiply to positive 5, add to negative 6. And by using the zero product property, we'll end up with x minus 1 equals 0, or x equals 0, uh, sorry, x equals 1 is a solution. And we'll end up with x minus 5 equals 0 or x equals 5 is a solution. Oh my gosh, this is so much like smoother. This program is awesome. Yay, for free software. Um, yeah, okay, we're not done because we got to check our answers. So y you guys don't have to spend a touch a ton of time checking. Just make it look like, you know, you made an effort so you can be like, all right, well, in your head, I'm checking one, two times one is one, or sorry, two times one is two. So this is gonna be the square root of two minus one, which is, so uh, two minus one is the square root of one, is the square root of one plus two equal to one. All right, well, right off the bat, we see that that's not gonna work. So that means that this one is not a solution. It is extraneous. Okay, and um, apologize to whoever's subbing for me. Um, if I make some weird noises here. Sorry, not sorry, just kidding. Plug it in a five, plug it in a five and you'll get 10 minus one will give us with our check here. That's gonna be the square root of nine plus two. And we're asking the question, is that equal is that equal to, what do we plug in? Five, and that's three plus two. Is that equal to five? The answer is yes. So this one is a solution. X equals five is a solution, and X equals one is not. And I realize that my frame is currently hiding that slightly. So let me just go like this real quick. Uh, oh, just move me out of the way. Look at this. I think I can just minimize myself. Look at that. So square root, of, square root of 9 plus 2, is that equal to 5? Yeah, it is. 3 plus 2 is 5. There you go. Look at that. 
Super. Super, 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 super. Next one. Keep crawl keep rolling. Keep on keep on cruising. Just keep on trucking. Okay, now that we've got our kind of review on how this works, back in, we're gonna we're gonna turn up. We're gonna turn up the sauna. Turn up the heat. Now the rule for these kind are it's the same steps, but we're going to run into a hiccup that you'll see here in just one second. And that hiccup happens when I say solve for the root. Well, the problem is the problem is there are two of them and I can't just square them and make them go away because if you square this side right now, what you end up with, don't write this, but you end up with this oh, just this thing that's just, oh, it's just real bad. Watch this. You end up with, don't write this, please don't write this down. If you have a pen and you start writing it down, I apologize. If you square both sides, you end up having to foil out this thing. And uh, it it's going to take you a really long time. And it's not going to make the roots go away. Um, it's actually going to make, um, make the roots still be there. So that doesn't really help us if we were to square both sides. So instead, what we're going to do, let me get my eraser out. Ooh, that's nice. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate one of the roots. Um, and we're going to end up, um, I think you can actually do it that way now that I'm thinking about it. But it's a little more complicated than what I'm about to show you. Isolate one of the roots. I typically will isolate, isolate the positive one. So I'm going to add. Um, x, the square root of x minus 3 to the right side, which will give us the square root of x plus 5 equals, moving this to the other side, 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. And the reason this is a little bit simpler is when I square the left and right sides now, um, so I'll come here. What does yellow look like? Uh, it's not great. It's not great, but it's something. Square the left and right sides. Um, the square root goes away and you have x plus 5 and on the right side now we do have to multiply this out but it only has one root uh, and it's not terrible it's not as bad two times better than distributing with two two roots that would be gross okay let's go ahead and multiply this out we'll get x plus 5 equals 2 times 2 is 4 2 times square root x minus 3 is plus 2 root x minus 3 and then we have plus 2 root x minus 3 and root x minus 3 times root x minus 3 is x root x minus 3 squared which is plus x minus 3. Now the reason this is nice is because we get this um, we have these two that are the same radical so we can add them together um, and we end up getting um, let's do well, 4 minus 3 is 1 plus x plus, and then we'll do our roots, 2x minus 3s, which is 4 times root x minus 3, which is pretty awesome. Okay, um, and now if I want to get like terms together, I have x's on opposite sides. We can come through here and get these x's together by subtracting x from both sides and minusing 1 from both sides. So you'll get 4 equals... Um, 4 times the square root of x minus 3. We're almost done. Divide both sides by 4. Maybe you want to see that. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Almost. We're so close. And you get 1 equals the square root of x minus 3. And now look at this. This is beautiful. We have this simple equation to solve. We took this horrible thing. We simplified it down. And if we square both sides, the root goes away, and you just get 1 equals um, 1 equals x minus 3, so x equals 4. And if we plug that back in, you can kind of check. Uh, let's kind of remember, 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Okay, remember this term is 3. And then you have... 4 minus 3 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, so this is 3 minus 1. Is that equal to 2? Yes, it is. So 4 is a solution. Okay, great.
cool beans. That, those ones are fun. There's one like that on your homeworks, or one or two, so you guys might get a chance to practice those. Um, okay, uh, and we're going to do a couple weird ones here. Um, this one's not too bad, so if you guys want to try this, you can. Um, if you guys feel like, yeah, Mr. Sluggo, we know how to do this, and you want to skip it, that's also an option, because we did some of these um, yesterday. Uh, so I'll leave that up to you. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so how do we do this? We want to solve for that root. The first thing I would recommend is rewriting this as a root. Remember, something to the one-third power is just the cube root. It's just easier for us to remember and not deal with weird numbers. Um, similar, uh, at the same time, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so we'll get um, the cube root of 2x plus 3 equals 6 minus 4, which is 2. Now we want to, we've got the root isolated now, and we want to eliminate that. Um, so to undo the cube root, we're going to cube, and you end up with 2x plus 3 equals 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and x, or sorry, 2x equals 5, x equals 5 halves, which is 2.5. Cool, pretty simple. Now we're going to apply, uh, this is just kind of a little refresher, we're going to apply that same, those same strategies to the next one, except remember this one has, um, is to the quite, slightly a different power. Um, now, the strategy from last time is, so I'm going to write this as a radical, but you typically always want to, when you're doing this, under the root, we're going to have x squared minus 3x plus 3, and then on our index is a 2, and our power is 3. Now, you had two options here. You could have put this three, third power on the inside or on the outside, but the reason, add one to both sides, the reason that we're not going to put it on the inside is because we want to kind of get in the habit of taking the root first, so undoing the power first, because that makes things smaller, and then we can square them and make them bigger, and you're really going to see that on the next example. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in and uh, do some of that wizardry right now. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides, which gives us a cube root of this cubed is the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 3. And that 2 is still there. I just didn't write it. And the cube root of 1 is 1. So we have eliminated that cube root. Um, and now we have to eliminate, or sorry, we've eliminated the cubing with the cube root. Now we have to eliminate the square root by squaring both sides. But it turns out to be um, not terribly complicated. All right, so let's go ahead and square both sides, undoing the square root. And we get x squared minus 3x plus 3 equals 1. Subtract 1 from both sides, and you get x squared minus 3x minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 equals 0. If someone is struggling in the class, or if you feel like you're, uh, you know, you're lost, I know there are people said that are gaining some success on this. So feel free to pause the video, take some time to walk around and check in with those that are a little confused or need a little bit of extra time. Um, is this factorable? Are there factors of two that add to negative three? Um, let's see, what are those? Yeah, minus one and x minus two. So we get our two solutions um, using the zero product property. One of them is x equals 1, the other is x equals 2. Okay, uh, they make this equation 0, so now we have to check to make sure that they satisfy what they are supposed to. Let's go ahead and plug those babies in. Check, x equals 1. Uh-oh, it's getting late. Okay, um, so plug into the original equation. Um, and so we'll, to check this one, it's a little harder, but it's not horrible. Um, minus 1, is that equal to 0? So let's check this. So that's going to be, so kind of do it all at once. That's 1 squared is 1 minus 3, because negative 3 times 1 plus 3. Well, those two cancel out. Is 1 to the 3 halves 
minus one equals zero, one to the three halves is the square root of one cubed. Is this equal to zero? Yes, the square root of one is one, one cubed is one, so one is a solution and we're good to go. And check x equals two. This one's gonna be a little bit harder, but not impossible, even for a computer. Plug that in and you'll get uh, two squared is four and then you get three times two is minus 12 plus three. Um, what do we end up with here? That's a little, oh, sorry, not minus 12. That's a mistake, let me fix that. Uh-oh, we're freezing up. Hold on, let me pause and get this sorted out. All right, good to go. So that'll be plugging in, what are we plugging in two? So that's minus six. So this is seven minus six to the three halves, which we can really see quickly that that's gonna be one as well, and it's, we're gonna end up in the same situation we had before. So this one is also a solution. Okay, cool. So both solutions, they both checked out. We are good to go. Now this is where it gets interesting. These next two examples. Um, again, solve for the root like we've done before. So I'll divide both sides by two to get x to the 2 thirds equals 64. Now if we write this as a root, that is going to be, I always said, put your root on the inside, put your power on the outside. Now this is where it gets weird. Let, re let me remind you of the examples that look like this. When it says what number squared equals 9, well there's two numbers. We have two solutions to this equation, x equals 3 and x equals negative three. When we take the square root of both sides of an equation, we end up with these two cases. Well, that's what we're about to do. I'm about to come over here and take the square root of both sides because squares and square roots undo each other. Take the square root here, take the square root there. And we actually end with two, end up with two separate situations. Situation one is the cube root of x equals um, eight. And situation two is the cube root of x equals negative eight. So we have our positive case and our negative case, just like this example over here. This is a separate example, but it's the same basic idea. And these have two different solutions. Those are what number multiplied three times, um, or sorry, uh, yeah, I think that's right. What number multiplied, or no, sorry, uh, the cube root of what number is eight. So this number is gonna be actually pretty big so we have a cube root here. We want to undo that cube root. We're going to raise each side to the third power. All right, third power. And we end up with these cancel out. X equals 8 to the third, which is 512. Um, negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 is going to be also, well, it's going to be negative 512 in this case. So we have our two solutions. And... I'm not going to check these, but they both work out, so we're good to go. All right, you guys give this one a try. See if you can um, find the solutions, and then, um, yeah, we're going to go over it here in just a minute, and we'll have one more little word pro problem that's pretty cool, and then that's it for this video, and you guys have the remainder of class to work on this assignment, and we'll kind of go over this stuff and maybe take a little quiz on Friday and... Uh, we'll see how things go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's do it. Hopefully you've paused the video by now and you're done. Get the, get the road on the show, Sligo. Okay, so remember, write your root first. This is the cube root of x plus 5. Power on the outside. And then put your 4 on the right. So power on the outside, we want to make things, when we're undoing, we want to make things smaller before we make things bigger. So to undo this power, we're going to square root both sides. And whenever we square root both sides, we end up with two cases that we have to consider. The square root and the square cancel each other out. And we end up with the cube root of x plus 5 equals 2. And we have our second case, 
which is the cube root of x plus 5 equals negative 2. Cool. All right, and then we have two equations that we need to deal with. Um, we have a cube root. How do we undo a cube root? We're going to cube both sides. And we're going to cube over here. If you guys can hear Oscar, because I can sure hear him. He's coming in pretty loud and clear. Okay, x plus 5 equals 8. And then we'll have x plus 5 equals uh, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8, which gives us x equals minus 5 from both sides. 3 is a solution, and x equals minus 5 from both sides, um, negative 12. Sorry, negative 13 as a solution. All right, and... Um, if we plug those in, we can check those real quick. Let's do that. Plug in in 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. So the question is, is 8 to the 2 thirds equal to 4? You can check. All right. Well, that is the cube root of 8 to the second. Cube root is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we're good. Now this one is going to be negative 13 plus 5, which uh, raises the question, is negative 8 to the 2 thirds equal to 4. So this is the cube root of negative 8 squared. Is that equal to 4? Um, cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So both of them check out, and they're both solutions. All right, cool. Last question. The formula p equals negative 1.6 root t plus 62 models the percentage of jobs in the United States labor force p held by um, men t years after 1970. In what year will the labor force be evenly split, split with 50% of the jobs held by men and 50% held by women? Interesting. Okay. So if we want to figure out when it's a 50-50 split using this equation, we plug in. Um, so P is the percentage held by men. So all we have to do um, is plug in 50 for P. And then we have um, an equation that should be easy enough to solve. Now, why are we doing this? Um, I want you guys to see this so that you can see a practical application of solving an equation like this. So this model was probably generated statistically through looking at a bunch of data and if they figured out that uh, um, this you know is you know gradually increasing and with COVID that has changed a lot more women left the workforce um, so it's probably a different equation now but it'll probably get back on that track of climbing up here and um, you know uh, women in the workforce climbing up. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So we want to solve. We're going to subtract 62 from both sides to figure out what this percentage is. So it'll be negative 12 equals negative 1.6 root t. Solve for your square root. Divide both sides by negative 1.6 to get the root by itself. And you end up with the square root of t is equal to whatever 12 divided by 1.6 is, oof, there we go, 12 divided by 1.6. So, um, and then we want to, that's just some decimal, so then to solve for t, we're going to square both sides, square, square, and we get a number, let's check it out, it's t equals something, and it's supposed to be the year. Let's take a look. You guys can do this on your own. 12 divided by 1.6, 7.5 times 7.5 squared. So that is t is 56.25. So hold on, though, because 56.25 is not the year. It said um, years after 1970. So 56.25 years after 1970, 
would put us um, roughly in, rounded to the nearest year, 2026. So this prediction was made a while ago, this equation. So um, we're looking at roughly a 50% split of, or when this prediction was made, a 50% split of men and women in the workforce by 2026. Hey, that's coming up here pretty soon. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys are having a productive day at school. Learn lots, and um, thank you to the sub. I'd like to thank uh, my wife and child and my dog for the support, and uh, thanks for your support. Um, and the speech that I prepared, I, uh, I got too sweaty as I was carrying it up to the microphone. Um, it's been a big day. Um, gosh, it's time to go to bed, 9.29. All right, I'm signing off. We'll see you guys on Friday, maybe sooner. Yeah, this is getting kind of awkward. I'll just pause. I'm done. All right, I'm shutting it down. I'm shutting her down.